drifting yesterday I didn't film a ton I filmed a some not not like a, a bunch a bunch today's Sunday and I've been working all day today well not all day all day but enough so I've got this thing down to I got to change plugs there was plug pulled out on one of the cools it's been that way since I got this car um, I forget which one went to where so I've got to figure that out I've got one plug on there where the injectors are that I don't know. Got the whole front on, timing belt, rear seal, turbos on it. So, yeah, she's, uh, I gotta do, what did I say? A, the spark plugs, figure out a plug or two. I got a gap the spark plugs. I got to put colder plugs in it, which I had cold plugs in it. I'm just going to put new ones in it, gap it to like 22, I think is what I want to go. Um, probably I need to put some oil in it and just put the rear seal in it. It's got a front seal. Uh, all the timing components are done. All the accessories are on. Turbo's on, plumbed in. Valve covers are on, valve cover gaskets. So realistically, just figuring out a few plugs and change the spark plugs and thermostat. I think that's all it's going to keep me from sitting it on there, which I can just change the plugs real quick. I've got them a colder plug, just gap them, put them in, and put the cools in. It's the front one that I don't know which the wires are one way or the other. Um, but once I set them all in, I think it's kind of, you'll be able to tell which one's been on the left and right because it's a, a plug that goes that way. So they shouldn't be flipped or twisted because the way the harness runs. So it, so it should be easy to figure out which one. If not, I can research it a little bit and try to figure out that. And I've got one brown plug on that side. I'm not really sure where it goes to. Other than that, be setting this motor in tomorrow if all goes well so hopefully it'll, it'll move pretty quick I may I got one hose that I'm, I'm not certain about it's kind of hard to get to if I can find that hose here or run up to AutoZone tomorrow and get that hose I may go ahead and replace that so I don't have to deal with that later and throw some oil in it I'm, that's the only questionable things I had besides throwing it in the car. That's my first one. I've never built a 2JZ before. The buckets, I finally figured out the buckets. I, the ones I ordered from Drift Motion, put right in, locked her down. So I should be good there. Yeah, ho hopefully I didn't leave nothing out or make sure my seals are in good or gaskets or, you know, all that mess. And you don't know until you put oil in it and start running it, whether you're gonna have a gasket leak or a water leak. And I've done a bunch of Hondas and front seals, rear seals, valve cover gaskets, oil pan gaskets, all this stuff. And, you know, got them down to where I didn't ever have any leaks. Very, very seldom. As long as it don't just dump out. If it's got a slow leak or something then something I can just tighten up, I'm okay with that. I can live with that. Yeah, I'm pretty content with it. I'm confident in the motor as far as everything being there. I do, when I put a new motor together, I'll put it in a car. I won't hook the coil packs up or whatever, and I'll fire it over, prime the oil, then I'll get it started, and I'll bring it up to operating temperature, shut it off, change the oil and filter. I'll do that a couple, two times, maybe let it idle some. And then when it finds its way to the dyno, which I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one, I'll probably carry it back to the dyno. I'll change it again or whatever after we go have it tuned, if I decide to go do that again. So we can turn it up now, because this motor's supposed to be a lot better. I hope. It's a 
non-VVT rods and a VVT block and two JZ GTE pistons. So theoretically, this thing should make you know a few hundred horse at least. I hope, and I hope the turbo's not dead either because it had some oil out of it and stuff after that motor blew up. But I think it should be okay. I think everything should be good. As long as it runs, don't pour a bunch of oil or water out somewhere crazy. Everything will be all right. Yeah, so that's where I'm at with it. Uh, hopefully be setting it in, like I say, tomorrow. That's the idea. So I'll have to move some cars around, but I think I can probably set this thing down in there tomorrow. But done for the day. Getting closer all the time. All right, here we go. All right, it's been another long, hot, sweaty day, but the motor's setting in. I don't have the bolts underneath here tightened up. I got the trans. Got to finish, I got a couple of bolts in it. Got to put the starter and a couple things in there and run the bolts up. And I reckon there she goes. Hadn't wired anything up or plumbed anything up. I just set the motor in. And it's hard to get the R154 in the IS300. Um, the motor doesn't tilt back enough. So before I started hooking stuff up, I let it tilt back as far as it could and stuck the R154 in. Which reminds me, I am not a fan of an R154 in an IS300. It's pretty difficult. If I had a choice, I'd go to an AR5 with a T56 slave and do away with this R154. But, or go to the CD trans and use the J2 bell housing. But it's in, it's what I got. A long day, it's hot. It took me forever to get that transmission to made up transmission, transmission. It took me forever to get that transmission to made up, so it took a little while. I had to find a pilot bearing for some reason that hadn't even crossed my mind. Changing motors, I didn't even have a brand new pilot bearing sitting here and luckily I didn't have to buy a clutch kit. I finally found one uh, from the couple of kits that I had ordered. And uh, yeah, motor transmissions at least sat in it tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna work on it tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna go collect or deal with the rental. I've got a roof leaking. So we deal with that stuff. Uh, maybe tomorrow, if, if I don't do that all day, I may end up back here and try to finish buttoning this thing up and uh, at least get the trans all the way in, drive shaft in, work on the top end some more and try to get it, you know, the intercooler piping and fuel lines and all that stuff situated. So that's what we'll be tomorrow. Maybe, if not Wednesday. So I, I don't think we're gonna drift anymore this year. I'm not 100% sure about that because I gotta finish getting moved and my rollbacks tore up and I got some rentals that are gonna be paid for and then the money that isn't being put into here, I'm gonna be saving that. And so I may just kind of sit on my hands until the first of this next year, come around spring or so and build me a garage and we'll start fresh and new at the beginning of next year so um the s13 i can once i get my rollback fixed i can haul it to the paint shop and to have it wrapped and all that stuff in the meantime even if i have to i'll just haul it somewhere and have somebody finish it if i got the money if i don't have a place to work on it so i'll do what i can but um i don't know that we're gonna drive anymore that pickup got hot on the ride home so um that thing's gonna have to be addressed. It, it does fine unless you haul something. And when you pull something, it does fine for a little bit. And if you go a long distance, it starts getting hot like crazy, crazy. So it may have a head gasket issue, I don't know. So I'm gonna start moving some stuff around here and uh, call it a day. I'm soaked from sweating all day. I'm tired, my back hurts. Getting old sucks, boys, let me tell you. Um, but I do have at least that much going on. So I, I don't have it beat yet, but I'm pretty close to calling it, you know, 
beat, so I'm beat. I know that. All right, here we go. I'm feeling high. 